All right, I'm gonna begin by saying congratulations. This is truly a huge honor. Um, I know you guys put a ton of work into this, not just this year, but in the past four years, this is a journey. So um, let's just start out with the basics. If you could tell us your first and last name, the schools that you got accepted to, and the one you're ultimately going to attend. Start here. Okay, my name is Adam Chioko. I was accepted to Notre Dame, Pitt, Duke, and Harvard, and I'm attending Harvard. I'm Anthony Samino. Um, I was also accepted to Notre Dame, as well as Harvard, Princeton, Vanderbilt, oh my gosh, Northwestern, um, and a few others that I couldn't really name off the top of my head, and ultimately I'll be attending Harvard. Hello, my name is Autumn Licardi. I got accepted into Georgetown, Duquesne, uh, the University of New Hampshire, Drexel, and Penn State, and in all of those, I also got into their honors colleges, including Shires. Uh, my name is Charlie, Charlie Chevalier. Uh, I got to in Notre Dame, uh, John Carroll, University of Dayton, uh, Creighton, and a few other schools, and fall between my towns to South Bend. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alex Germain. I'm going to uh, Dartmouth College. I was also accepted to UPenn, uh, Vanderbilt, UCLA, uh, and Berkeley, and a couple others, but um, I'll be going to Dartmouth. Okay, thank you. Can you describe the courses that you've taken at FHS? Start down here again? Okay. Yeah, um, I've taken a lot of AP classes. I took the AP English curriculum, both Lit and Lang. I enjoyed that a lot. I took all the way through French, French, French 1 through 6. I took Math through AP Calculus AB. I didn't take, Mr. Uh, didn't take BC, sorry, Mr. Sanford. <laughs> but uh, I, then I took Physics, uh, AP Physics, and then Honors Science all the way from freshman through junior year. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm as with a lot of these, I'll be in a similar boat to Adam, except for um, not going all the way through uh, French I took instead, um, up to Spanish 3, and then I decided to take French 1 this semester. Um, and so, overall, it was just a lot of AP and honors, honors classes, really the highest that I could go, but it's, it's worth noting that um, I never really ended up doing any dual enrollment or um, stuff like that outside of FHS. It was really just all classes here at FHS, AP classes and honors classes. Same for me as well on that last point. Yeah. Uh, I took a lot of honors and I took a couple AP classes. I did the full honors and AP curriculum for uh, science and that's pretty much it. But um, for English, I know I took uh, AP Lit, but I did do the um, dual enrollment classes at Mercyhurst. So I took Psychology um, 101 and then Composition 110. And I also went all the way up through Spanish, from Spanish 1 to Spanish 6. So I'm actually in a different boat than most, most of these people. Uh, I only took honors level classes for the four core, four core subjects basically through senior year, but I only took two AP classes all throughout high school. Uh, I did do some RCI classes. But I never took AP Lit or AP Lang or that. That say doesn't help you at all, but it's not, I don't think that matters. <laughs> say that. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, yeah, I took uh, multiple AP classes, kind of structured them throughout my high school career. I took, um, took one sophomore year, a couple um, junior year, and um, you know, mostly during my senior fall, but um, you know, a bunch of different courses. I did the Spanish um, up to AP Spanish, and uh, yeah, just finding a course load that you can manage that, uh, you know, yeah. Could you each provide just a couple minutes about the importance of study and the grades that you have received, and maybe the time you put into some of your courses? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, studying and grades are important. That's your baseline when you're applying to any college. It's not the only thing, and I wouldn't necessarily even call it the most important thing, because making sure that you have like a good full application is very important too. But you know, I put in my due diligence with all my classes. I made sure I was studying as much as I need to to get the grades that I wanted, and especially in classes that I was really interested in, like absorbing the material and 
you know, growing academically that way. It's, I don't know, I've, I've always found that it's just a matter of time management and making sure that you're not doing too much. Because I find that the more, I, if I study more than I need to, I start to get burnout and it's less good in the long run. So I think it's finding the right balance of, you know, making sure you're putting in enough effort, but making sure you're not overextending yourself too, to make sure that you know, you're mentally healthy and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and along with that, um, you know, all of that is very true. And I, I for me, um, I guess on the point of grades, like, I never got below an A, but I'm sure that that's not um, true for all of us up here. Um, so it's definitely not necessary to be getting all A's. Like a B in a class, especially if it's a, a tougher class, is um, not really going to hurt you um, in the long run. Um, that happens to all of us. Um, but yeah, studying um, and really just putting time into courses in general um, really depends on the class, obviously. Um, and so, for me, I found that um, what was most worth it to me in order to get the most out of my learning, and then also to see that the uh, fruits of that in the grades that I got was to um, create some sort of balance in how much time I'm spending on studying and coursework for each class. Some classes need more time, some need less time. Um, and so just trying to figure out like how much you should be putting in every day, um, at least in terms of maybe thought or just reading over something or just actively listening in class because, let's be honest, not everybody is always actively listening in class. Um, that is really what can get you um, to where you want to be in terms of grades, I felt like. Uh, for me, uh, I, I, my studying like throughout my high school has changed a little bit. Um, at least my freshman and sophomore year, I was really anal about my grades and I was really wanted to always like get the A and do whatever I could to get the A and just be, in my mind, what was perfect. And then probably it was junior year, Mr. Sanford's AP Calc class, AP. <laughs> I was hit with my first B, and it was kind of a shock. But I'm glad that I act I'm glad that I took the class because there are, like are many times like you can just study and study and study, and you just won't kind of understand the content like as much as you try to. And there will be people in your class like these two boys next to me who just are really, who really, <laughs> who really are like just understand everything, just get it right away, and you can do as much studying as possible, and um, sometimes you just won't understand, but I'm glad that this happened to me, at least in high school, because there will be times in college when you just really don't understand anything, you're going to be hoping for like a C in some classes, and um, so I'm really happy, like I'm glad with the grades I got, I'm glad also that I was I really picked up a big studying practice because at least with nursing it is something that you're just you're gonna have to make sure that you put, make time to study and make sure you have time make sure you have good studying practices that will help you pass some of the exams that go further so I in all in all like I really the studying process I think there you should study as much as you can but you should not make yourself too sick over it because you can still get a B and still go to an amazing college. Uh, so, grades are obviously important. Uh, I have never gotten a, a little B before, but I also have said before, I can grade her as as high as some of the other people on the stage. Uh, I think the biggest part about studying uh, is time management and also being organized. Uh, time management, just setting, aside, setting time aside so, so you know you have time, you be able to study. And then being organized, you know, I know a lot of people who are very smart but aren't organized and they miss deadlines for homework, they don't get projects on time, or you know, you always have that kid who says, oh, we've attested it. Don't be that guy. So I would say the biggest thing is being organized and being on, being on top of all, all things you have to do. Yeah, I would agree with that, just mostly um, you know, using your time well and uh, you know, finding a balance between, uh, you know, having fun and, and, and studying is, is a key component and also just working towards uh, just if you're taking if you know that you're having a you know you're scheduled a harder semester just making sure you find a balance in, in your day and uh, 
you know, don't take all your hard classes at once or you'll get burnt out or it'll become too much to manage at once. I guess on one final note, on uh, Alex's point of having fun and working, all of us have social lives. We all hang out with our friends. We all see people and do uh, fun things. Maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but it's it's very, very, very possible to have a good work like a good work life balance and get in somewhere very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. We're going to start with you this time. Could you tell us about any summer opportunities that you have taken advantage of? Um. Yeah, just for summer opportunities, um, you know, all you guys here, um, just looking up ideas or looking up stuff online that go with your major and, um, you know, finding stuff locally as well um, is a key component for these admissions, the admission process, uh, you know, having, doing stuff in the summer and, you know, making a story for yourself um, through your, through your ideas and through your passion, like a passion project is important in this process and, um, yeah, it's something you guys should all look into for the following summers and off periods. Alex, could you describe some of the things that you did over the summer? Um, yeah, I did the, uh, I re locally I did the Gannon Summer School of Excellence here. Um, that was kind of advertised. Um, I, I think they still do it each summer, so uh, it's, you know, kind of environmentally based uh, sustainability. Um, so that was kind of what I was, was going for and uh, allowed me to to get a good experience uh, locally and um, you know with people that, that I knew. Uh, so I have always had an interest in business. That's why I plan on studying uh, finance. So this summer I went to Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week with uh, a couple of my peers, and uh, I had a good time there. Definitely showed my interest to keep learning. Uh, and I also had, was able to get a leadership role. We we split up into teams, and I was a leader in my, on my team. And I think having leadership roles and things like that can definitely help your application. Uh, and then I'm also doing Armored ROTC, and the scholarship application was all throughout the summer. So I spent a lot of time doing that, uh, really researching that, or meeting with people. And then I ended up getting that in the fall, which made me, which uh, I did all the, all the work for over the summer, and I got it in the fall. And it's really made me a more uh, attractive applicant to a lot of schools. Uh, for me, uh, I worked over the summer. I am a lifeguard at Lakeshore Country Club, and I also. Uh, do some instruction there. So I am CPR slash AED certified. I'm also lifeguard certified in lifeguarding. Um, but also, it's more like in the fall whenever this happened, but I joined the Youth AmeriCorps program, and that's where you volunteer 300 hours of service uh, to, the school, to the school district. And so I helped out a lot in um, in the middle school, I was with Ms. Flaherty, Ms. Mr. Hardy, and Ms. Brocious over the school year. And I know that you can, there's an opportunity in the summer to join the like summer school that they have there, and you can be an AmeriCorps member for there. And I know that it makes you look very attractive. Um, you get 300 hours of dedicated service time, also, and they give you a living allowance, so it's around $150 bi-weekly. Um, and you get a little, um, you get a little like a, like a award for doing it. And which for me, if you volunteer 300 hours of service, uh, that you get like a one fifteen hundred dollar paycheck at the end. So it's a very, it's a very um, nice looking um, thing that you can do, and it looks very good on your resume. You can also volunteer for 450 hours. You just need to make sure that you have the time in your schedule so that you complete it. You can complete it all. Um, and then other than that, that's pretty much all I did over the summer. Yeah, um, for me, I'm going to try and like track out like exactly like what I did each summer, starting the summer after my sophomore year. Um, that summer was spent um, working a little bit. That was really it. Uh, summer after my junior, oh, summer after sophomore year was also a lot of stressing about whether I would get my driver's license or not. Eventually I passed the test. Um, but um, summer after junior year was really when I kind of started doing more things than just working. Um, the, the, the main thing that kind of launched me into um, one of the big things that I did during the fall was I just started um, volunteering at um, uh, state representative's office, um, like his campaign, uh, Ryan Bizarro is his name. Um, he's the state representative for Mill Creek and Fairview in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. And so me, or I and Adam, 
Um, both of us, we, um, we did that in 2020. We would just volunteer. We'd drop off little pamphlets outside of people's doors. Um, and then in the summer, um, this, this last summer, I um, got a little bit more involved with it. I just started going a little bit more on my own. Um, I'd make calls um, to voters. I'd say, how, how do you plan on voting this November? Um, that sort of thing. That took up a lot of my free time. Well, um, in the meantime, I also worked a couple days a week. I just worked at Walmart. Um, and um, so that kind of, just, just kind of being there and showing up, um, not even doing it that often or being that exceptionally amazing at it, but like making my presence known um, and kind of having a place in the office, um, you know, at, at least every week at some point, um, that allowed me to kind of uh, jump into um, a job there once the school year started. Yeah, uh, for me, basically everything he said there at the end, uh, working with Bizarro and then getting hired for a job in the fall was what I did last summer. But I guess something that is I've done I've done a lot over the last couple of years is I've applied to and done a couple of pre-college programs both on campus and off campus online at a couple of different schools. I uh, just to name drop a couple that I do recommend applying to if you're interested is Notre Dame Summer Scholars. Notre Dame Leadership Seminar and Yale Young Global Scholars. I did those, but it took about a week out of each of my last three summers. I, you know, it it was a resume builder, but it also gave me a chance to you know learn more about things that I'm interested in and meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, one of my friends from the Notre Dame Leadership Seminar, I'm going to Harvard with as well. So it gives you a chance to broaden your horizons with in terms of other you know, academically minded people across the, the entire country and build your resume and um, learn anything more about whatever you're interested in. Because I took, you know, government, politics, international relations classes a week each over the summer. And it really wasn't a huge time commitment. They usually were free. And um, it really helped me out a lot. Are there things that you participated in here at Perry High School? Start down here? Sure, any order. Okay. Let's start with Autumn in the middle. I'm oh, sure. Branch so what out. haven't I done? Um, I am involved in a lot of sports and activities. So for sports, I am on the soccer team. I was also a captain this year. Same thing with the swimming team. Um, along with being the captain, I also qualify for districts every year. And then I was also a part of Unified Track. So that's it for sports, but for activities, um, I was a part of the marching band for all five years. I am also the drum major. Um, along with the marching band, I have been a part of jazz, jazz and concert band for four years. Um, and then I'm also the president of the Spanish club. I've been participating in that for four years. And I was a vice president last year. Um, and then I've also done PJAS for five years. And I got in, I've gone to states each year um, and then I'm also the vice president of the National Honor Society so that's pretty cool um, and then I'm probably I'm probably missing something but that's the that's the ones that I can think of right now mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so I have played football basketball on track uh, the past four years I've been a captain of the football team the basketball team I'm also the class president which has been pretty good um, but two very big things I've been a part of. Uh, I'm part of the Business Academy, which happens to Green. The uh, uh, big thing I do there is I work in the IRS VITA program, which is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So I have real people from the community come to our, come to our school, or I go to Gerard and I'll meet them there. And they move to their taxes, and I file them. I'm fully qualified to do it. Uh, I'm a, I brought back Mr. Green. What was the most number we've got there? How much money we bring back? $89,000. $89,000, not just me, but that's. All students of Fairview brought back eighty-nine thousand dollars to people in our community. So that's a that's a huge uh, thing I, I do really help my application a lot, especially being a business major. And then another big thing I'm a part of uh, is at uh, the towards the end of junior year last year, I uh, uh, was a co-founder of Team Fairview, which uh, you know I'm Catholic. That's a big part of my application in Notre Dame. Uh, every school I applied to was Catholic. But that's a big, really important part of who I am. Uh, so Team Fairview is a sports ministry club I helped found. And I've kind of been the basically president the past two years. I had a great time with that, but also being able to start your own club and uh, being something you care about definitely helped my application a lot. Uh, 
Oh, and I've also been an altar servant at church since I was in like fourth, fourth grade. So have I. <laughs> Um, yeah, so for sports, um, I played a bunch of different sports throughout uh, my high school, but mainly um, basketball and tennis. Um, wasn't quite a captain, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, for, uh, for extracurriculars, I participated in uh, speech and debate. Um, I went to states um, you know, two times for speech and debate. Um, I'm, I was the, uh, the president of the Spanish club. <laughs> Um, uh, and uh, sorry, uh, for G Green Team, I'm the secretary of Green Team. I help out with that. Um, part of Model UN, and um, yeah, I just try to do whatever I can to get involved throughout the school. All right, I guess uh, down here, um, I've been involved with speech and debate for four years. Uh, I was a three-year president of speech and debate. I was a state champion my junior year. Um, beyond that, I was involved with Model UN. I was uh, five years in the marching band, four years in the concert ensembles, and one year in theater. I tried that this year, I liked it a lot. Um, in terms of starting clubs, uh, with my pal here, uh, we started the Fairview Association of Student Activism our sophomore year, which we used to try, you know, platform social issues in different causes around the community. It hasn't been as active this year, but especially our sophomore and junior year, we tried to lead a lot of different demonstrations and things like that around the community. And we had a lot of success with our fundraisers. And I guess beyond that as well, I was involved and was a two-year president of Here Erie's Youth, which was a youth-serving philanthropy organization to the uh, Erie Community Foundation where we made uh, $10,000 grants once or twice every year, so we kind of steered the direction of where those were going. Um, yeah, I guess that was, I didn't play any sports, for any of you who know me, I'm not entirely athletic, but um, that was what I did for my four years, and you know, he's going to say most of the same things. Yeah, um, pretty much the same things as Adam, except I did speech and debate for three years instead of four years, here he was used for one year instead of two years. Um, so you can tell I kind of rode Adam's wave on a lot of these. Uh, but um, I don't know what I can uh, re-emphasize from that, anything I'm missing. Um, NHS president. Yeah, I'm, I'm the president of NHS. Um, and, and, and so you, you probably hear like a lot of like, just like a, a very wide breadth of like so many different things like we're a part of, so many th different things we're doing. And that's like, I want to reiterate, like that's certainly a good thing, but um, it's, I'd say that it's less of exactly what you do and maybe a bit more of what you do with it. Um, so being the president of this or the vice president of that or the secretary of this or the secretary of that, um, that's on itself is really great and it shows a lot about you. Um, but the main thing that it shows is that you've actually done things with the organization that you're in. So um, I'd recommend like, um, in terms of the extracurriculars that you choose to do and that you choose to not do, just do the ones that you actually like doing um, and the ones that you can kind of go a little bit further with, just outside of the norm, maybe, um, of what would normally be expected of your average member of this club. Um, taking it further and going kind of your own way with it um, really shows a lot about you as an applicant. Thank you very much. Tell us about the time that you spent working on the highly competitive applications and what you learned from this experience. Right, I can start. Uh, yeah, I put in uh, a decent amount of time. I didn't want to completely like bog down my entire life with applying to college, but I did put a decent amount of thought into all of my essays. Uh, in the essay process, I cannot thank Ms. Malay enough. We worked on every single one of my essays. Uh, so she read through all of those. And um, we, you know, edited all of them, changed things where they needed to be changed. It, it's not worth spend. It, I don't want to say it's not worth, but don't stress yourself out on making it like every single last word of all of your essays has to be perfect. But put a lot of thought into it. Make sure that it's conveying you. Make sure that it's uh, you're passionate about what you're writing about. Miss Malay will teach you more in AP Lang if you choose to take that about the college essay writing process and how to do that specifically. But don't like ruin your life over them, but definitely do give them a decent amount of thought. Yeah. Um, 
for me, obviously, like same boat there. I can I can go into a little bit more like specifics too, um, in terms of you know my personal experience. Um, the process for me um, was a little bit different. Um, instead of just kind of applying to a few scores, schools, um, I had the, 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 the plus of um, getting like my application fees waived um, just because of like my home situation. So um, it didn't cost me anything to apply to a lot of schools. Now for most people, it could cost you 50 to $100 to send an application into any given school. So those costs really rack up if you're applying to a lot of different schools, but they didn't for me. So I ended up applying to like 20 schools. Um, and this is not typical of like your, your average applicant to any college. Um, but for me personally, a lot of what came down to making a management was starting the summer after my junior year and really kind of compiling and playing around with ideas in my head even before then. Um, so like I would go on college tours and I would just start jotting down notes about the college, the kind of things that the college emphasizes, some things to put in like a why us essay, because a lot of colleges ask that, why do you want to come here? Um, and you really need to name some specifics. Um, they really enjoy specifics um, and things that kind of show that you will fit well as a student at their school. Um, so when you're doing those sorts of things, that's what you want to be looking for. You know, if you're watching an information session or taking a tour, Take, take in all of the things that the college is trying to tell you. Um, and so just kind of throughout the summer, I was toying around with a lot of ideas, writing on different topics about myself that I thought were the big things. And from there, once I really started diving into each application for each school, some schools had a lot of essays, some schools didn't have any, some schools had one or two, and a lot of schools had things that I could reuse from previous applications. Um, Here's an essay that I've already written. I just need to shorten it by 50 words, and it applies on this application too. That kind of saved my life throughout the application process. I, 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 if I had ended up needing to write 30 or 40 essays um, for 20 schools that I've been applying to, I wouldn't have made it through that. Um, so, really, just trying to kind of be scrappy about, like, about, yeah, about <laughs> the things that. Um, I'm writing down and what kind of prompts that they can apply to really helped me out. Um, so that's kind of the side of making the application process easier. Making it the most effective really comes down to taking these essays that you put a lot of thought into and tying them into some sort of broader narrative about you as a person. Because um, a lot of schools now, especially in the United States, this doesn't really apply anywhere else. Um, they try and look for they say the word holistic, but it's not really holistic. It's, it's to say that you're um, very exceptional at like a couple things, or like in this very like generalized area, something that you will be successful with at their school. Um, so kind of taking the things that you do and the things that you enjoy and tying those into your essays and really weaving this idea in of you as an applicant, like who are you, what kind of things do you enjoy, um, what kind of things can you bring to this school is really what makes your application the most effective it can be. Yeah, I agree with Anthony. Um, I know that these two boys had to do one. I'm not sure about them, but probably. But I had to sit through an interview, and I have one with, um, I had one with a former student at Georgetown. And I, the whole entire time, like I prepped myself before I made sure I knew exactly what I wanted to highlight about myself. I wanted to, uh, I researched it more about the school and like how, like what their culture is like there, what like the classes look like there, uh, their pass rates on like the NCLEX exam. Like I did all this research before just so I would look better on to this uh, person. And uh, at least for me, this is the, um, former the graduate from Georgetown, he was super nice and all he wanted to do was just like help me look better to the Georgetown admissions. And what I did whenever he asked me like what I want to do, I just told him exactly what I planned to do. I said I want to be a nursing student, however I still want to get involved. Uh, like Charlie, I also want to do ROTC. and. Um, I also want to, I was also talking to him about minoring in Spanish and like how 
um, how I like advanced through Spanish and what I brought. And then I also talked about um, my extracurriculars. I talked about AmeriCorps. I talked about the marching band. I talked about swimming. And I just talked about my journey and how I like progress as a person and how like I'm different from uh, my freshman year self to what I am now. So. Uh, so I think about this time last year is when I started my college applications. Uh, I was mainly thinking about an essay to write, so we're filling out the activity section of the Common App. Uh, one big thing about having the activity section is just try and find some fancy words to use when you're describing them, makes you sound better. That's true. Yeah. Um, and then uh, find something to write about in your Common App essay that you really care about. Uh, I'm sure all of us wrote very different essays. Uh, sports is usually a pretty cliche topic to do. Uh, I did sports. I started out writing about uh, the big game I was in, and that's usually about a ago. And I talked about how I was on the bench for that game, and how I was a junior on JV, and I absolutely loved it. I embraced the role, as I, that's just what I wrote about, as kind of, I think I really showed who I was in that essay. Um, so my uh, location was pretty normal, I didn't have to do interviews, but uh, back in November, I got deferred from Notre Dame in the first round, and it was pretty deflating, but I had to keep pushing forward, and uh, we deferred, every school has their own policies, but Notre Dame, you are supposed to write a letter of continued interest, so I did a lot of research about Notre Dame. Uh, so what I did was I, I also met with some alumni. I have a very good family friend as alumni. Uh, Jameson Cook is a current, just graduated. I know him, I just talked to him. He's a, little, he's a former student here. Talked to him a lot. And then uh, I have a professor at RCI who like, taught my government and politics class who actually got a doctorate in Notre Dame. So I talked to all three of them to help me out about what Notre Dame is, how I read, how I read this essay of this letter. And I also just, Filled Notre Dame in, in about uh, the things I do, the things I've, I've been doing in my, my life since I applied. And I looked at research about Notre Dame and kind of made connections there. Like, um, Notre Dame has a fighter program, and I talked about that and how they have it there, uh, and things like that. And I also, um, uh, let me go off a little side tangent here. Uh, your letters of recognition can be very important. Uh, now that's basically just based on uh, the relationship you have with your teachers, as well as other uh, people uh, you know. So you can't really just like make a good one. That's all basically on you having uh, very close relationships with teachers, having genuine, genuine relationships with your teachers. So I've been really lucky to know some of my teachers very well, and we some great essay, some great uh, letters of recommendation. But uh, when I had deferred, I sent some more in, so I asked my priest. He wrote me a very good one. I asked my professor, professor of RCI, who was an alumni. I also asked Dr. Kincaid, who wrote me a fantastic letter, and I am convinced that is the main reason I got another name. I thought it was so good. Uh, but so what I'd say there is, uh, build a good relationship with the staff. You know, like not everyone here can ask Dr. Kincaid. They don't know. They don't know him as well. I had the opportunity to work with him some time over the summer. But find people you know. You know, work with them well, and uh, so find people that you think will. Should we be able to write about your character? Yeah, um, you know, the biggest piece of advice for the college applications I would give is to apply early, um, meet the early, uh, you know, early action, early decision, whatever you want to, whatever you choose. Um, but to hit those deadlines, those deadlines are mainly uh, November 1st. Um, you know, that's tough if you have like a fall sport or if you're, you know, you have some other commitments, but it really makes a difference. And um, you know, admission rates for early decision and you know early action applicants are usually much higher than for uh, regular decision. And um, it allow you to uh, you know hear back earlier and uh, just have a better chance of, of getting in. So I would, I would definitely recommend that for for anyone and, and to get started on your applications this summer. Yeah, uh, just to kind of like pile on to like what do you say about early decision and early action? Um, you know, it, it, they seem self-explanatory, early decision, um, though to just kind of tell you, early decision means that if you get in, you're going, and early action just means you're applying early to an earlier deadline, and you'll hear back from the college earlier. Um, and both of these do have like, usually a much higher acceptance rate, and so I applied early um, to quite a few colleges, some that would allow me to, and others that didn't have the early kind of application. Um, so early decision definitely helps for sure because it tells the college that you're going there if you get them. So they have no reason to believe that you wouldn't go there if they accept you. So they would like to accept you um, as a result of that. But I, I, I would also just be careful, like, if you're applying early to these schools, like, 
don't think that that's like a guarantee that you're getting in um, if you're doing early decision or early action. Um, and also to make sure that if you get deferred, which you very well might, um, you're updating the college on the stuff that you're doing after you sent in that application to make sure or to kind of assure them that you're still doing things and you weren't just doing all the things that you've done just to look good for the application. Uh, just an add-on to what Anthony said. Uh, I did early action for all the colleges I did. Um, for Georgetown, I got deferred and then I got waitlisted. So I didn't even, like by May 1st, I thought I was going to do King University and I was gonna just do all the stuff that I wanna do there, being like their honors program and stuff. Um, but I was, I was actually, I was happy with going to Duquesne. It wasn't like it ruined my life since I did not get into Georgetown. However, I did end up getting into Georgetown. Um, but I think that it, just because you get waitlisted too, if you really, really want to go to this college, I, you sometimes might have to bite down like the bullet and just and, and put in like the 500-ish uh, dollar deposit into um, whatever college that you would be your second choice. However, like if you don't get into, if you apply and you don't get into these schools, it doesn't mean that you suck. It doesn't mean that like, like all, all your studying was nothing, was like it had no effect. Because if I didn't get into Georgetown, I would just go to Duquesne and I would have been happy. And I would have picked up all these great studying habits, all these like great time management habits that I would have built up over the years. So if you don't get into these colleges, it's not the be all end all. And if you do get waitlisted, you can still, you still have an opportunity. The waitlist does not mean rejection. And as one final little note here, just as on the be all end all point, I guess I think the most important thing to highlight throughout the entire application process is that don't think about going to a good college as like your end goal. Cause there's nothing that I did, not, like no extracurricular that I did at all that was, I did because I wanted to get into a good college. I did all of the things that I did because I was passionate about them, I liked them, and that's who I wanted to be. And even colleges are looking for people who are passionate about things. So the best and like most all-encompassing advice that I can give is do things because you like to do them, and if that gets you into a good college, great. But if not, you're still becoming a better person and a more engaged person, and that's what's important anyways. Uh, I just want to thank the five of you. Uh, I know this, this took a lot to ask you to come and, and you know be vulnerable, bear your stories, um, the, the things that you did, the successes, the failures. Um, I, I think all of that is extremely important. Hopefully everyone got something out of that. Uh, I wanted to give you a chance for some questions, but for the, for the sake of time, we are going to get out of here. But I would encourage you, these you know who these five are. Uh, if you have a question, ask them. Reach out to them. I'm sure they'd be willing to continue the conversation if you had any personal insights that, that you needed for your story and your journey. Um, once again, I want to thank you guys for this, and everyone can head back to fourth period. Thank you.